Hey, so I've spent two full days in Moldova and it's still hard to process um, how I'm feeling about it, but I can definitely tell you what I've been doing. Uh, the very first day that we got here, we were able to participate in a network of organizations that are at the border helping the Ukraine refugees. And uh, their first objective was to create or understand how, what it looks like to create a database um, for the people coming in. Because a lot of times these families are going from distribution center to distribution center. And um, they want to be as efficient as they can with the supplies that they do have. So making sure that one family is only going to one distribution center every couple of days instead of hitting up multiples in that same time frame. Uh, their second objective, which just feels icky, is um, what they are calling sharks. So these gentlemen will stand at the borders and as they're crossing into Moldova, they're preying on these women um, for things like sex trafficking and um, just taking them to all of the wrong places. And so they're trying to figure out what's the best way to get the information into these women and mothers hands before they even cross into Moldova. Um, making sure that they're getting to um, safety checkpoints and um, Christian centers uh, before they try to jump into a taxi. And so they're trying to figure out how they can coordinate all of that, that the information and that effort together. Um, from there, we um, hit up a Ukraine refugee camp and we got to meet a couple of families um, to see so many families kind of in one small space and trying to pack as many beds. You know, that was, it was good to see that they had clean beds, um, but these are middle-class families being displaced and, and not wanting to be in these positions. And so the one mom that we got to meet, her daughter is going through um, medical classes and um, she was trying to do all of her work on a cell phone. And so she had asked us if we could um, find a laptop for her so that she could complete her classes. They're just, they're trying to do things like they normally do, would do on an everyday basis, like go to school. And, um, you know, we lived in a, a COVID world and so understanding what it means to try to take classes on, on Zoom calls and, and write papers on a cell phone, it's very difficult. And to do that while you're still scared and concerned with family back home is, is even more pressure. Um, we met a, a mom whose son has um, Down syndrome, but he also has a, a heart condition. And she was asking the pastor if he had any contacts with um, some, a medical team that could come and take a look at him because she was afraid that he was going to die. Um, but to see to see him and to hold him was, um, it brought a little something in my heart. I don't know if it was joy or hurt or pain. It was probably all of them. Um, and, and just to be able to share my own son's story with, um, with her and the hope that there is that he will hopefully be okay, um, was, was, a moment for me.